what's the good word, y'all? It's your boy DKB here. So we know over Joe Douglas' tenure so far, some of the best players and strongest contributors, both offensive, defensive, and special teams-wise, have come from undrafted guys and they've come from waiver wire pickups. And Joe Douglas is hopefully looking to strike hot again, this time going out there and winning a tackle. Uh, now, I say winning because from what I've seen, uh, and this came from Ari Mirov, I believe, who tweeted it out, the Colts also had a waiver wire claim for this new tackle, Austin Deculus, that we picked up. But of course, since we've been on this losing streak, uh, we ended up having a higher priority over the Colts. Basically, it's reverse standing. So the worse your record is, the the higher you are in the waiver wire uh, order, uh, the better your record, the lower. Um, so with that said, who is Austin Deculus and this guy that we hope can contribute? Keep in mind, offensive tackle is a position that we've looked at consistently as being problematic for us, especially with injuries starting to strike and pile up. Once again, not quite to the, the you know tragic levels it was last year, but definitely still a significant problem. Um, so, you know, for those that still want a Lyle Collins uh, or even a DJ Fluker or, you know, one or two of the other guys I mentioned before that we've worked out. This isn't going to be for you guys, but it still helps to see that we've at least gone out and tried to uh, make something happen here. So as far as Austin Deculus is concerned, uh, we're talking about a five year starter with LSU. He hasn't started every single game, uh, but I know he had a, a, I think still maybe a standing record uh, playing in 61 games with LSU over his five year tenure. Now, anytime I hear a fifth year player and there aren't extenuating circumstances, I automatically assume you're not talking about a cream of the crop kind of guy here. But there's still a lot to really love uh, about Austin Deculus. Now, the Texans drafted him uh, in the 2022 draft in the sixth round. He basically spent the majority of his rookie year uh, inactive. He was dealing with an ankle injury. And then, of course, they didn't really quite need, them, uh, need him. And once they did, he basically spent uh, the majority of his time working on the special teams unit now for what it's worth he did end up uh earning himself a left tackle start and you know used the term earned loosely there's a lot of injuries to the texans offensive line this year uh but they entrusted him over uh um uh, I can't remember the other guy. I want to say the name was like George Christian. Uh, but either way, there is a, a, a player with previous experience with the coaching staff um, that he was a, you know entrusted to start over. So still somewhat of a good sign. Uh, you're talking about a guy in his second year, so you wouldn't expect a whole lot out of a six-round rookie. But uh, he could be one of those lower-class uh, gems. I mean, I know when I looked into him, one of the quotes from Eric Galco, who's uh, the East and West Shrine Bowl, uh, you know, all-star game director, um, overseeing scouting and player personnel. He did have this quote about Austin. He said, I think he's a plug and play type, an eventual NFL starter, or at least a high quality backup as a right tackle. And Austin Deculus has been hit with this, uh, this designation as being a right tackle only kind of player. So it was interesting seeing that the Texans did opt to use him as a left tackle. And then you take a look at the scouting reports and everything coming in. And uh, Austin Deculus was basically looked at as a guy that needs to move inside the guard because he did have limited mobility when it came to go out, going uh, out there and excelling on the move and being asked to, you know, make plays in space uh, as an offensive line prospect in general. So, this is a guy that definitely has his limitations, but, uh, you know, he could develop into a, a guy that's unexpected and maybe performs around the level of what we're seeing, uh, you know, year one out of a guy like Max Mitchell, if he gets pressed into action, which is exciting to see, you know, at the very least, it has another capable guy. You take a look at, uh, you know, Deculus and at least, uh, you know, some of the tags out there. Very durable guy, played in 46 games again, uh, excuse me, started in 46 games, played in 61 games overall. Um, pretty much has gotten time to sit and marinate with the Texans, new staff. Uh, interesting to see him getting cut, but they're also expecting to kind of get guys back. And as you, you know, oversee a 18-week season in the NFL, you're going to have to make some harsh decisions there. So uh, their loss hopefully will be our game. Here's what I would leave you guys with in terms of 
what can be exciting about a guy like Austin Deculus is hopefully maybe he just sits for the year and we see what he ends up giving us uh, next year. But the way injuries have hit this offensive line, we don't know what will happen with Dwayne Brown, for example. They may be hedging their bet here. Austin Deculus, durable, has uh, amazing length and knows how to use it. Active hands. He's a phone move run blocker, which goes into that limited mobility type situation, but just expect run blocking to be a strong use for him. Um, prototypical size at the pro level. So, I, you know, we hear this often, but when you want to draw up a left tackle, generally you don't look at a guy like Mekhi Beckton, right? You don't say, give me the 6'7", 350 pound guy that can move, you know, 4'3", stuff like that. It's going to be, give me this 6'5", 320-ish pound guy has, you know, great movement or great length, etc. From a physical standpoint, Austin Deculus fits that mold very, very well. Uh, upper body strength is going to be his calling card. Everything you see on tape about him and, you know, uh, how he initiates contact and stuff, he's top heavy. So, obviously, we're going to have to do a lot with the feet. Uh, but you expect him to be able to make some movement on the line. Um and at least for what it's worth, even though he's not great at, you know, open space uh, ability and movements, he was asked a lot by LSU uh, to uh, complete, initiate, execute, etc. Uh, pull blocks at a high level. Obviously, we know LSU is one of the, the better schools or, you know, they've had a fall off. But generally, they're regarded as one of the better schools out there in the NFL. Um and his blitz rec recognition is pretty solid from what I was able to see very loosely, very quickly from LSU. Uh, he picks up uh, blitz uh, from the second and third level, so safety, cornerbacks, uh, <clears throat> and to some degree linebackers. Uh, he's done a good job of being able to pick them out and being able to hand off, pick them up, do whatever he needs to to uh, keep things clean. Also... A good nugget of information from some more recent, uh, uh, you know, playing time that we've seen from him. Again, week four to maybe about week six, I think, is when he was relied on to essentially be a starter on the Texans offensive line. Um, week four, he was a part of it, and I believe that was his first start for them again at left tackle. The uh, Texans offensive line was ranked as the 10th best in pass protection. And also during that two-week span, uh, that, that Texans line didn't allow a single sack on C.J. Stroud. So uh, you are talking about a guy that in a very short sample size, he does show that he belongs on the NFL level. And again, as I mentioned uh, from Eric Galco, the, the scouting director for the, the Shrine Games, um, this definitely fits the mold uh, from a character standpoint, from a skill standpoint of a guy that can make a long tenured career in the NFL. So let's see what he does. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are and I'll catch you again. Peace.